here's the second part not the second part the third part of our tutorial the lighting we've been through the modeling and the texturing and a tiny bit of more texturing and now comes the fun creepy part lighting uh, let's see so if you're just watching this right now this is what we were gonna end up with um, if you just started watching this uh, links for the other tutorials will be below but you can also download the blend file for what I have right now and just start from here if you're just interested in, in the lighting uh, if not then I suggest you just go back and watch the other tutorials uh, like I said in my first tutorial all credit to the lighting goes to Evil Moon Moose who helped me achieve this effect when I had this effect and he did it like this and very grateful for that <clears throat> very grateful for that uh, he actually uh, posted it right here but um, I mean if you want to read it you can go ahead and go to blenderartist.com look me up moonwolf 12 is my alias there I guess and I suggest you join I mean it's a really good place to show off your artwork to get tips to get help I mean no one can do this by themselves but uh I'd love to help you out if you'd like to add me. So, you know, think about that if you if you want to get serious with the Blender. Uh, anyways, let's get started on our lighting. We just gotta do one thing before that. We gotta position the door. <clears throat> because the door, as you see in the picture, is ajar. Which it is not in here. So that's what we're doing right now. We're actually going to click on where a hinge in the door should be part of the middle hinge. Now let's hit 7 and Z so you find out where our door is. And let's do that one more time because being 3D if you click a point somewhere and you don't click it in another view it's not the same place. Um, if you've been a Blender, Blender artist for quite a while you'd know this. But okay now that we have that down here let's set the pivot point to 3D cursor and what? Uh, sorry about that. One more thing. Let's actually shift right click on these two door handle pieces. Control J and then shift right click on the door. Well, right click on this and shift right click on the door. And control P, set parent to object. So now whenever we move or do anything to the door, the door handle goes with it, which is what we want. But since we want to have a different texture, I'm not going to join them which is what I did here anyways so let's go to 7 and hit R to rotate and it should rotate around that point that you did actually oops whoa look at something here whoa where my door go it's a it's a plane that's why it's like that I'm actually gonna no we don't need to do it right here actually seeing that this is a little bit far away but I don't think you can tell from the camera so I don't think it matters to Z oops Z it's not hit Z and there we can see it's slightly ajar if we want it we can rotate it a little bit more then let's go to transform widget and see how that looks and I think that's looks really good so one more thing as you can see we have blank space behind this door we need to uh, grab our wall is that our wall? No. Let's grab our walls, tab into edit mode, go into edge select mode, and shift right click on these two outer uh, on these two outer edges and just pull and grab them along just like that. Now we're gonna tab out and do the same thing to seven. With the floor, tab in, right click on that and grab that out. I'm going to change my view a little bit so I can actually see where I'm going. Alright, so now tab out. I'm going to actually right click on the doors and hit F. And that will fill a space between those two edges that we had selected. So that's something handy to know, especially if you're modeling a face point by point. Something I'll use very often. So F12 to render that. And we can see it's gone way back, so that's what we wanted. So that's good. Now I believe I forgot to model the flashlight. I 
thought I did. I guess I didn't. So let's get started on that now. Let's hit 7 and just click somewhere off in the distance so that we can work on it in peace without disturbing anything else. Hit Shift A. It's actually tab out. Shift A. And add a circle. Let's give that 12 vertices. We don't need 32. And that's it. Now we want to hit E. Tab in. Maybe that'll help. Hit E along the Z axis. It's going to be a very simple flashlight. You don't see much of it anyways, so not enough detail anyways. Alright, so now that we have that, let's hit E and S to scroll out. And then S to scroll. No. S along Shift Y. Hmm. There we go. Shift S, Shift Z. So we can pull that out a little wider. Now hit E and Z. Now, a very important thing we need to do is actually one important thing before that. Let's hit one. Let's sh Alt right click on this loop of vertices down here. And let's. The cursor's in the middle. Alright. Let's hit E to extrude. Then right click. And let's hit Control. No. Control S selection to cursor. And that brings snaps that right in. Alright, so now we're gonna control alt on the top part of the flashlight, shift D, right click, hit E to extrude, right click, shift S, cursor to selected, shift S again, selection to cursor. Now we have that closed up. But let's actually um just click on an edge or a vertice or a face or whatever mode you're selecting in. Click on one of those. Control L to highlight that whole thing. And let's hit P and by selection. So it's a separate object. So when we have it to emit, emit, it's not also affecting the flashlight. Awesome. That's basically what we wanted to get. Let's actually get the materials down one right now. So let's click on our flashlight. And I don't know how that texture got in with the flashlight. Let's add a new material. Click, type in flash light. And it's just going to be a dark black. Just a black, not a dark black. Just like that. And increase specularity a little bit. It's supposed to be a metal object. Metal object. A little bit specular. And let's actually. I didn't do this with the other one, but. I watched Andrew Price's video on making bullets and being a girl I don't have any interest in making weapon weaponry but he showed me some very interesting things about bump mapping and how to make things seem a little bit more metallic than they are and he did a really good job with that so I suggest you check out his video and one thing he said was that metallic metallic objects their specularity is also a metal so it's gonna shine black I guess or a dark or a dark black so it's just something I'm going to try out see if it works for me. So now let's right click on our, sorry I got off the topic there. <clears throat> let's right click on our flashlight light new and that's actually going to emit. So bring that up. So now it's going to look like it's a flashlight, which you know it is. So now with the this selected, with the flashlight selected, shift right click on the actual flashlight control P set parent objects. So now if we were to scale this flashlight, it'll also scale the little lights, but if we scale the little lights, it's not gonna scale the whole flashlight. Because now we're gonna position it. So let's hit one. Let's actually rotate that negative ninety degrees. Grab that and let's put that into our scene. Oops. Oh, I forgot to set the pivot points to individual origins. There we go. Let's hit zero. That probably has to come down some. Grab it out. Up a little. And before we rotate it, I actually want to shift S. Excuse me. Um, 
cursor to selected and then shift A and now we're gonna add our light. It's gonna be a spotlight. John, see, okay, there it is. Now we're gonna rotate that negative ninety degrees. Neg rotate negative ninety degrees. Guess not. Let's rotate it a regular ninety degrees. There we go. Move that out to the front of our flashlight. Zero. Let's see if that actually is looking at the right place. Let's hit one and Z and then three. I don't know why it's pointing back there. Who knows? So I'm gonna hit RR so I can position it roughly where the flashlight would be positioned. There we go. Flashlight light would be shining. And now we're actually gonna parent that to the flashlight, same way. Control P, select parent object. So now we can scale the flashlight down a little bit more. And now we can rotate it to look at a wall. And I'm gonna rotate that down. Bring down bring that down as far as it can go before melting into the floor. Let's F12 and render that. And that looks pretty good, but it's not what we're hoping for, right? It's not this picture. Definitely not that picture. <laughs> Alright, so now let's... Actually, the light seems to be pointing a little bit off. I'm actually going to rotate that out. Let's look somewhere. There we go, about in front of the flashlight. Alright, so I think that's really good. So now we're going to actually tweak the light settings. And under spot, what's the name of the flashlight? Light. Uh, enable halo and the intensity is 0.3 and a couple steps just like that and we're also going to actually give it a yellow color like a flashlight the halo is what makes it show um, the yellow light all throughout the light and not just where it's hitting we're actually gonna also click on show cone and if we were to render this it looks like a flashlight light so that's really cool uh, just like that and once again props go to evil moon moose he helped me a lot so check it out i really i'm not marketing for them or anything not like you you don't buy stuff there that was a dumb thing to say i'm sorry wow all right <laughs> let's change that to a yellow color also and i'm actually going to increase the size on that Let's render that, F12, and that's looking very good. But it's not as dark as this light here. If you don't want it to be as dark, then you could probably leave it as that. But I think being dark, it gives it a better ambiance. Uh, ambiance. Uh, makes it look much creepier, which is what this tutorial is about. So let's get that done. Right click on this light, let's hit 7, and let's bring that light back towards the door. just like that I don't want it to be in the scene though because that gives it like a really ugly clear glare like a spot of light just shining there doesn't look good let's decrease that energy to like 0.5 and make that a really dark yellow color so if we were to render this now it gives us a better better ambiance better look and actually the bump mapping looks to be a little bit too bumpy so I'm going to click on door and under textures if you hold on a second not door my bad I was like where'd it go walls under bumps the geometry is let's bring that down to like point zero one true under that and now we have less obvious bumps on the wall, but still a little bit. And I think that looks really good. So if you didn't if you don't if you didn't see how I got this, check out my other tutorial. It's called Part 2B Creepy Flashlight Scene. Part 2B. Creepy hallway scene, sorry. Part 2B. And now basically we're done with this. We just need to tweak it a little bit to make it look that much better. So to redo that. Maybe the emit is up too high. Let's bring that down to one. That gives it a more yellow color. 
and that looks better. And I like it to be a little bit more darker, so I'm going to bring that energy down. Whoa. Let's do 0.15. Re Re-render that. And now the light's not so bright. And I think it looks like the flashlight is bouncing off the walls and creating that look instead of just like another light just hanging there which is why it has to be a darker color he also pointed that out to me to make it look darker as the light bounces off it's not as bright it's darker so it's probably too dark let me increase that energy point two and the light flashlight light is probably too bright so we can decrease that as well but it just has to do with your preferences, how you like your scene to be. Like a lot, like a guy said, your scene looks too dark, but that's the way I wanted it to look, so that's the way it's going to stay. So I think that creates a really nice, really nice effect. I uh, guess that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. If you have something that needs to be critiqued, the project you're working on, and you want it, you know, be perfect. Good place to go, blenderartist.com. dot org. Sorry, uh, the finished blend model for this will be on Mediafire. I'll post that up there as soon as this is done uploading. And that's basically all I have. Thank you for watching.